welcome back to Robots vs. Children, where we pit the future of humanity against the future of technology and see who comes out on top. The game we're playing today is Connect 4. So this is a game where you have a little board and you take turns dropping chips into the board. And you're trying to make a row either horizontal, diagonal, or vertical of four of your chips in a row. This game is rated for ages seven and older, but Maddie is only four. So Team Children is gonna have to bring in a ringer. This is Hendrik. He's eight years old, a big hockey star, and the ambassador of the Milverton Agriculture Society. So, a worthy opponent for the machines. Team Robots has a new competitor today. This is the MechArm 270 Pi from Elephant Robotics. I've been asked a lot about how you get into robotics, how you learn new stuff, uh, what arms maybe you could look at buying. This might actually be a decent contender for that. Now, I've never used this arm before. I've never used their API. So we're gonna figure that out kind of as we're doing this project. Um, but let's open it up and see what we have. So first thing, we have a user manual, which I'm not gonna read. We also have our arm here and its little robot condom. This is a, actually a small arm, a little desktop size arm though. It's got some IO up top here. Sound, sounds like it has little servo motors in it. The arm is about here up. That's kind of their standard arm. Down here though, they also have a Raspberry Pi 4 built directly into the arm. Now that's actually really convenient because it comes with a development computer built right in. Now Raspberry Pi 4 isn't exactly rocket powered, but it's more than enough for you to start using the different programming languages they have. They've got Blockly, Python, ROS. There's a bunch of different ways that you can work for this arm and the different ways are good for different ages, right? Blockly would be better for a kind of a younger age or someone just getting into robotics, or you could go for ROS or Python if you're doing your own kind of development. That's really nice. For this project, I'm going to only use this Raspberry Pi. I have Jetsons and other stuff that I can do to do really in-depth, really high-powered stuff, but I wanna see how well I compete against the kids using basically just this arm. We also have uh, a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. The Raspberry Pi on here um, has micro HDMI connectors, so if you don't have an adapter, you couldn't really use it. So that cable comes in here. A power supply. Uh, I think this arm is only 40 watts, which is nice for like mobile robotics. It does come with an EU plug, uh, which I don't have here in North America, but an adapter should fix that. Got some IO ribbon cables. And we also have, oh, we have a USB-C connector, so you can connect to the arm. Um, and it also has some little Lego, it also has some little Lego pips here. So one of the things that they've done is on the base of the arm down there, or on the end of the arm, they've set up this little grid pattern so you can start connecting things to the end of this using just Lego, which most, you know, most geeks have. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to kind of get into your own development. The, the end of the arm also has this too. I can't seem to get these to fit. I don't know if that's just something wonky with my arm or if there's supposed to be some sort of different connector for up here, um, but it doesn't go in quite all the way. Very, very tight. Always make sure the area around your robot is clear and you know what it's gonna do. So I made this design for the arm to get the little coins. So you'd have this mounted somewhere, you have this on the end of the arm, and the idea being that the robot comes underneath, slides a coin out, 
and then it picks it up and there's a little servo on top to hold it in place. The problem is that when the robot slides it out, once the coin gets far enough out, there's nothing underneath it to stop the whole tower from just flipping it. And now that's really inconsistent where this coin is gonna land. And so the robot's not gonna be able to pick it up consistently. So unfortunately, this is not gonna work. My hope is that I can design and print a whole new one of these, a whole new gripper and get it done by tonight so that I actually have a little more time to get this program before tomorrow. 3D printing is awesome for this kind of stuff because you can iterate really quickly. But when you're talking on time scales of having a day to do an entire project, 3D printing actually even becomes a bottleneck because it's not fast enough. Being properly fueled is essential for any athlete. Hendrick seems to have decided on an entire piece of kale to fuel his training. That is a bold statement. I've designed some new end of arm tooling for the robot. It just got off the printer. So I still have a little bit of time tonight that I can work on this uh, before it's the contest tomorrow. So you have all the coins on here. The payload of the arm is pretty low, but should easily be able to lift this. So a little servo and a little plate. So it rotates the servo, drops a coin into the slot, then rotates back and we'll dispense that out into the Connect 4 game. I hope that this works consistently enough. It seems like it's gonna work pretty okay, uh, but we won't know until we actually get it on the arm and start trying to load it in. Now that the coin dispenser seems to be working, let's check in with Hendrik. He has brought in his personal trainer, which is his younger brother. It seems like the trainee has already surpassed the master. And he's being very humble about his victory. There's a camera mounted next to the robot that we're using to detect the state of the board. The camera knows roughly the color of each player's token and will filter the image to pull out the areas that are those colors. Once it knows what areas of the image are the robot's colors and the player's colors, it can then filter out where the individual chips are and it will store that inside the computer. This is very similar to what I had done with the cornhole video, except it's a little slower because it's not on a Jetson. The computer will look at all possible states of the board four moves from now and try to figure out which one will hurt it the least. This is called the Minimax algorithm. It is good enough for simple games like Connect 4. You could maybe use it for chess or checkers, but anything more complicated than that, this algorithm just becomes unwieldy. The number of states of the board becomes so large so fast that you just run out of processing power and memory way too fast. For a Raspberry Pi, I found that looking four moves into the future is about all it can handle before the delay just takes too long. There is a saying that says, compare yourself only to who you were yesterday. Be your own competition. Well, Hendrick seems to be taking this to heart. He's actually playing a game against himself. Does this count as twice as much training? The second design for the coin dispenser also wasn't quite right, but I don't have time to print all new tooling. So I ended up 3D printing this small adapter here that just adjusts the angle of the end and a small little compliance piece here that helps it locate where the Connect 4 board is. We're on to the main event. We're playing till best of five. So whoever wins three games first is the winner. We're gonna take turns who is going first. There is a very slight edge to whoever actually starts the game. So we're gonna take turns to make sure it's fair. After a coin flip, the robot gets to start first.
There's a little victory dance from their robot. Starting the next round is Henrik. Hendrik is looking a little uncertain about his choice there. Two nothing for the robot. We're playing best of five, so one more game and the arm wins. I think Hendrik knows it's over. And that's the third game for the arm. All in all, this is a decent arm for the price. It's not super rigid or accurate, so you're not gonna be making parts with it. That's not really what it's meant for. It's meant for education. So using Python or Ross or Blockly, there are lots of different ways for you to program and learn on this arm. And it works for a bunch of different skill levels as well. If you're looking to get started with something like this, I'll put a coupon code down in the description that you can use for anything on their website. And that discount ends up coming back and supporting the channel. So it's a great way for you to support us and get some little hardware to play with. Robots are up three nothing over the children. So it looks like Skynet is pulling ahead but there are still lots of areas that we want to test. So make sure you subscribe so you get notified when those videos actually come out. Also, if you have other applications that you think our mechanical overlords will lose to some children, make sure to put that down in the comments and we'll add it to our list to test. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching. See you next time.